What is up guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are playing MotoGP 18. Uh, this is episode number 3, I believe. Um, pretty bad that I'm almost starting to lose count. We are that deep into the career mode now, but in all seriousness, today we're going to try and uh, graduate from the Rookie Class Series in the Red Bull Cup. So, uh, final two races, uh, we're off to Gran Premio de San Marino, and then the finale, I have absolutely no idea where that is. So let's get into it. Let's actually, before we get into it, change some of the assists. The only thing we can turn off now is auto tuck in, so we're gonna do that and see how we go. All the training wheels are off. Rossi won his ninth championship in 2009. How many is he on now? Hello from Mizano. Hello. Here he is, the big fella, giving his cousin a hug after. A pretty successful last episode, I'm not going to lie, but we are here for the San Marino Grand Prix. I wonder if this is the same San Marino that they um, raced in F1 uh, back in the day. But uh, yeah, I have not ever seen this circuit. I've never drove on it on any racing game. So this is going to be a bit of a learning experience for, well, pretty much all of us. I love that helmet, by the way. It is good to be back on this game. It always feels like it's been a little while, to be honest. I, even though I, 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 I drove this game yesterday, had a league race in between time, you'll probably have seen the league racing video already, so... Well, it, it should already be up on the channel, so check it out if you haven't already. I've uh, been really enjoying the multiple uploads I've been doing lately. This game has almost instilled me with a fresh batch of motivation, so hopefully that can continue. Hopefully you guys continue to support these videos as well. It does mean quite a lot to me, so yeah, let's, uh, let's keep the run going, and hopefully by the end of this episode we will be in Moto3, so yeah, lots to look forward to. One thing I need to remember is to do the auto tuck. Um, now previously, I actually thought the tuck was for tucking into the corner a little bit more, like leaning in more, but I, I that was a really big misconception. Savor it. You won't see Carlos Tate in 24th place a bit too often. San Marino feels like a pretty nice circuit. We actually not really losing touch to the to the bikes ahead. Do a 48.8, 1.2 1 seconds off of Onku, pole position provisionally at the moment, and we're still learning the circuit. So we're finding the rhythm of this place to be quite quite good. Risky stuff. We actually gone fastest of anyone through that middle sector. Uh, should have shifted into first gear a little bit earlier, hooked it into the corner. Otherwise, it's been a really good lap. We've actually closed the gap to Tate in front, and you guys know from the videos already, he's a, a, a championship contender. So this, I think this will put us on provisional pole for the moment across the line. 46. 47, 7, one tenth away from Onku. Very, very solid opening run. The qualifying session has just ended, and while the riders make their way back to their boxes, let's have a look at the final times that show us the front row for the start of tomorrow's Grand Prix. Not bad. Not bad at all, if I do say so myself. I decided not to go out there again. I mean, we're pretty, we're right at the front, right away. I feel like this could be another Austria situation. Um, at least we'll have a few bikes to over overtake in the race, I suppose. I think we're only going to get stronger as well. But, really, really solid effort. Let's go to the race. Uh, hopefully take our second win of the season. And really just cement ourselves inside the top 10 in this Rookies Cup. All the riders have taken their places on the starting grid. Riders are deep in concentration. With just a few seconds to go until this San Marino Grand Prix begins. Lots of fiddling there for all the riders. Just making sure everything is alright for the start of this race. Five red lights and away we go from the front row of the grid here for the San Marino Grand Prix. Again, I'm probably just a little bit too tied into my monologues at the start to really hone in 100% on the race start. So apologies about that, but... Oh dear, almost lost the back end there. We still hold our track position of third place, Carrasco and Onku. Battling quite hard for the lead of this race. They want to buy into the championship. If they... Oh, oh my god. 
should have lost it there. Somehow I didn't concentrate. They want to get into this and pull away from uh, Tate because he is, I believe, the championship leader and uh, wanting to take his maiden championship. This has not been a good start. i talking way too much, not really focusing, not like I was in qualifying. Let's see if we can lunge in. We seem to be quite good into braking zones. It's close. The vibration was there! Ah, oh, this is the corner. I keep overshooting. I actually feel like auto tuck was slowing me down because I feel like it was tucking. I, I explained this in qualifying, but I felt like it was tucking all the time and was affecting affecting my cornering speed. So just a tip for you guys: if you guys are struggling for pace, try turning off auto tuck. It's really not, not that much of an assist. You only have to press Y on the straights to be faster. It's easily manageable, and see if that makes you quite a bit faster. Because I think for me, it it, it has worked. This is the tight corner. Oh dear. I feel so on edge. With the traction. Floor it on exit. We can also carry a bit more speed into the final corner like these guys are doing right here. Punch it off the exit. Tuck into the slipstream and also tuck into the... What is it? Like the front shield. To get better slipstream. And here we go. Let's mount and attack. Not literally. Let's not actually. Let's not physically attack the guy, please. Let's attack his position. Anyway, back on the podium. We can win this race. We we can win this race. Try third gear. Uh, yeah. If I tidy up my line, I can actually hit the apex without mounting the curb. Final corner, and we start the final lap of the San Marino Grand Prix. Still in third. Bit of time to make up, and I still think we can win this. Oh my god. Oh. No! Oh, that was almost such a... That could have been the move of the series, if I pulled that off. E2. Excuse me if I don't talk too much. I want this win. Carrasco, you've been leading this entire Grand Prix, and you, sir, are about to get sniped. Final corner. This is it. No! We're not going to get it. Ah! Oh. I feel like if I just perfected that lap just a little bit better, we could have won that. That was really, really close. My, oh, my terrible start just gave it all away. That could have been such a sick race. But it's P2. Pretty good points in the championship. I'm not going to lie. I will take them. But that was a good race. That was a really, really good race. I feel like for battling, that was probably the best one we've had so far. While we wait for the cameras to take us to the park Seven to meet the stars of the race, let's take a quick look at the final race ranking. We now move up to P6. One point away from the top five, four points from getting fourth place of Onku. Um, his brother, though, um, Ken Onku, a little bit untouchable there in third place on 106 points. We are, uh, yeah, quite away, away from those guys. But a good final race, and uh, I still think we could get some really good offers uh, in Moto3 with uh, that kind of championship position. So fingers crossed. This second place finish is an excellent result for both him and his team giving them hope for the following race. This guy, he likes hugs. Let's call him Lotso Hug and Bear or something. Oh, we have a development, people. We have an email from our personal manager. So... Uh, contract offers. Over the course of your career, you'll have the opportunity to find faster motorbikes to ride on, change category, and try to become the MotoGP World Champion. During the season, I will let you know via email when there are offers from other teams. Everything depends on your reputation. The more fans follow you, the more teams get interested in you, and the better offers you will receive. Okay, so, I mean, it should depend on how good I am, not how many fans I have. Imagine, just like, if I was a YouTuber, before coming into 
rookie class. I've got I've got 300,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, but I'm a dog crap rider. But nah, sign me up to Moto3 to the best team because I have all these followers. That makes so much sense. So we're going to go off to the finale. Let's uh, check the old calendar and see where we're off to. It is the Aragon Circuit in Spain. I've heard of that before, but I've never really seen it in, in pictures. So again, this will be another interesting one. GP polls. Which of these teams should hire myself? Patronus, Binter Racing, RBA, Bo Skull Rider Team, and Marinelli Snipers Team. I think I think I should go for the snipers. I did say I was going to snipe that guy in P1. So, I mean, maybe the, the affiliation is there. And, and I mentioned it on record, so that, you know, brand awareness... It, uh, it means a lot, especially with my 1,386 followers. Think of the brand deals. Hi, we're joining you live from Spain. We're here in Aragon. There you go, Chief. Captain. I'm getting some Turkey vibes. Or oh, Istanbul circuit. Down that straight there that looked absolutely ginormous. Oh, <laughs> How did I survive that? And by the way, as well, this is uh, the first episode that's been recorded after the, I'm guessing, like, day one patch. It was like 8.8 .8 gigabytes on Xbox One today. It's like uh, it's like downloading the whole game again. I, I don't know what kind of monster update that was, so if you guys have any ideas as to what was in that, that'd be much appreciated. Oh, you are joking. Oh, no. I have gone up an escape road. This sure is a little quirky layout. I like it, though. It's this corner right here that absolutely sneaks up on you. Well, simply because I don't know the circuit, but, yeah, it almost like a blind corner. You can't even see it coming. You have to... You have to actually, like, break before you recognise. And that corner as well. You have to break before you even know that the corner is there. One thing I've noticed is when I fast forward through these sessions, no one actually improves while I'm fast forwarding. So that seems to be a little bit of an issue. It shouldn't work like that. It should be the opposite. Everyone should be getting faster towards the end. But given the marathon session that it is, maybe everyone just gets their times in early and, and that's that. I don't know. But, but it is 7th place on a 2 minute 5.5, 1.3 seconds away from pole. Um, honestly, that's not, that's not too bad. I feel like, again, just like San Marino a little bit, there's still a bit more time to find. I didn't, you know, spend uh, a whole lot of time in qualifying today in either of these sessions. So um, I, I think as we progress through the race, we'll actually build up our pace a little bit more. And especially like if we just follow a few bikes. Uh, we can pick up what they're doing too, so I think I think we're in good stead for the race too. The final riders have taken their place on the starting grid and everything is ready to start the race. Just a few seconds to go and the lights at the Aragon track will signal the start of the race. Red flag, red flag. The race is over. I always kind of wonder why a red flag is displayed at the start of these MotoGP races, but maybe that's something you guys can let me know about. But away we go for the Aragon GP. Kind of boxed in as we head into turn one, I'm not going to lie. Would have liked to have found the inside to dive a couple of guys, but I'll digress. It's P9. We lost a couple of places. Conservative. Not wanting to fall off the bike. That is the last thing I want in the last race of this series. We've got a lot of talent scouts to impress, a lot of teams to, you know, show off to. Two mic overtake. Ignore the contact. Oh, the switchback! Oh no! It's the slow speed stuff. Again, I'm really diving in quite late. But one day, I will learn how to drive a bike at slow speed. And that day is not today. Oh! Alright, slipstream. B5. 
Can that be P4 before we even get to the braking zone? It's our old mate Carlos. Again, we seem to be really good. Really, really good at high speed corners. So we are going to eat up this final section as we move into P3 at the end of the first lap. So drop to P9. It was a bit of a yo yo this first lap. Hello. Hello. Are we setting something up here? Carrasco. We're going to do the under and over. Ah! Oh, nearly. Nearly got the lead of the Grand Prix. I knew we'd have a good race, and I knew we'd move forward, but I didn't think we'd do it by this much, this early. Outside, inside, switch back early. We slowed it down, but... Can't make it work. Ah, oh, Carrasco. I'll be having that back, thanks. And here we go. This is it. This has to be for the lead of the Grand Prix. We're in the slipstream, we're tucking in very nicely. We're going to go to the outside. Get a nice flowing run. That is the lead. But the bigger test is whether we can actually hold on to it as we emerge out the other side of the final corner. Keep it nice and tucked in. Just punch it onto the final straight. And now, we wait. Look at this. I mean, there's such, just such a huge difference in my riding. Just in three episodes. We're actually taking normal race lines. We're driving... Oh, sorry. I keep... I keep referring to that. We're actually... Even the slow speed, we actually look fairly comfortable now. We're not pinching ourselves on the inside of apexes anymore. We're using the full width of the track. That wasn't a great example of that. We might get overtaken here. But my point still stands. We're still a much more complete rider than what we were two days ago. That is not a great run for you there, sir. Thanks for the lead. Here we go, chaps. Last lap of this championship. Last lap of this race. Let's finish the way we were meant to start. By crashing. I'm kidding. Oh, that back end, though. Still wanting to push. Still wanting to push despite the lead we have. Yeah, pretty big gap. We don't even need to... We don't even need to tuck in on that straight there, but we did anyway, through the final corner. It's been a pretty commanding race. If only we were this good when we started the championship. We're going to finish it the way we probably should have started. Across the line, our second race win in the Rookie Cup. 20 Moto3 teams out there. Sign me up. While we wait for the cameras to take us to the Park Ferme to meet the stars of the race, let's take a quick look at the final race ranking. That fastest lap, that fastest lap absolutely blew them away. 2 minute 2.8. Must have been with a bit of assistance with uh, Slipstream. But either way, it's a pretty commanding win. We now graduate, I hope, to, to Moto3. To be honest, if we were still going to be in this championship, I, I think I'd think about bumping up the difficulty now. But otherwise, it's been a pretty good championship. Started off slow. But we do end up getting that fourth place in the end there. Just overtaking uh, Yamanaka and Onku in the end. So, 91 points. If only, if only, there was like three more races. This rider has been able to impose a frantic pace on today's race. And now he and his mechanics are rightly going to party. Okay, here we go. This is the moment of truth. Uh, we've received offers from other teams. Do I want to see them or do I want to stay in the Red Bull Rookies Cup? We're going to have a look at some offers. So, we have an offer from Patronus Sprinter Racing, uh, RBA Skull Rider Team, Marinelli Snipers, Honda, KTM, and Honda again. So, looking at the performances, Snipers, it, oh no, we got more than the snipers. Okay, so we've got quite a few here. Honestly, I'm going to go for whichever team has the best chance. So these are all the kind of lower end teams. Um, towards the right, their required championship position is 15th. 
So the better teams are the ones that we got uh, initially at the start. So we've got Patronus. Could potentially be the Mercedes of Moto3. You never know. Um, RVA, Skull Rider team, Marinelli snipers, and then that is the top 10 runners dealt with. Then we get into the lower midfield, I'd say. So, it's between Patronus, Skull Rider. I do like the orange. I do like the affinity with snipers. But, um, hmm. If we go to snipers, we have one teammate. If we go to the either of the other two teams, we have two teammates. So that's that's quite the that's quite the comparison. Yeah, not hard enough beating one teammate, but can you be can you imagine beating two teammates? If you do pull that off, it does look very very promising. As I hit my microphone on on the old CV, so that might be something worth looking at. So, oh man, I, I honestly can't decide. I'm looking at. The overalls, I'm looking at the bikes. I do like that orange bike. I do like the the prospect of racing for a Patronus kind of Mercedes affiliated team. We've gone from Red Bull to Mercedes. I mean, is there any more upward spiral from there? I don't think there is. But literally, they're all offering the same thing, to be honest, in terms of first rider status and the performance of the bikes. I have made my decision. I'm gonna go with Patronus. And there we go, it is done. The contract is signed. We are now a Moto3 rider. Now that you've reached the world, racing, world of racing that really matters, you will have to continually show your value remaining ahead of your team's expectations. You will be given one qualifying and one race position objective every week. Furthermore, each team expects a minimum position in, in the riders championship Satisfy their requirements to reach the right, first rider status and receive more bonuses. So, now we actually have targets. Whereas we didn't have those before, we could have done whatever the hell we wanted. And we probably still would have got offers. But now it really matters. Now we need to be consistent. And now we need to deliver. Bike development. Improve your performances by developing the bike to suit your riding style. Every weekend you'll earn development points which you can use to improve aspects of your vehicle. Every team has a certain amount of research and development to set aside for your vehicle, but you'll have to decide how you use your resources to get the best out of the bike. Five development areas. Uh, spread your resources wisely. Go to the bike de uh, development section straight away to start. So that's pretty exciting. And uh, that is the bike. I I've got to say, I did like the orange bike of the other team, but the Patronas... I think maybe it looks a little bit nicer as well. Those overalls probably match my my gloves and my helmet as well. So, that is it for today's episode. If you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. To see plenty more racing game content, especially the MotoGP stuff. Uh, we've got an email. Basically just going over the uh, bike development like we just read, it, like we just read before. Um, I spoke to Patronus Racing... They're really excited to start this adventure with you. Team objective. We already know what the objective is. And the goal is to be the first rider. So um, we'll go over this uh, and kind of re, re go over everything in the next episode. But that's going to be it for today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Like I said, I'm going to keep on doing daily content of MotoGP. So hopefully, the support is there. And if it is, this series will continue to run. We are in Moto3 now. Next. Moto2, and then the pinnacle, Moto GP. Already seeing some uh, absolutely huge progress. But that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you next time.